love that music, don't you? Sorry, I'm feeling in a really naughty mood today. Well, it's just been such an amazing summer. Who's had a great summer? We've had sunshine, which is unheard of. Um, a little bit strange for some of our leaders because for the first time in 20 years, we had no rally to go to. I had my suitcase packed. It was at the bottom of the stairs and I suddenly realized that we weren't going on a rally. It was a very bizarre feeling, but it's been a brilliant summer for us. We've had a great time. We've enjoyed the weather, enjoyed working with the team. A couple of weekends ago, our youngest son got married at home, which was just a joy for us. It was perfect. And at midnight last night, we got back from Germany where we were um, collecting our big overland vehicle, ready to go off on a big expedition again. So life is good. Life is good. Okay, so because we got back so late last night, I'm going to admit to you I've got no notes. I only saw my slides at about 10 to 10 this morning, so I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth today. However, I would suggest that you do take notes because just by chance something good comes out, I would want you to capture it. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to talk about today, if I can, is the power of recruiting. You know, we all know the products are brilliant. The products quite simply sell themselves, and I think all of you will agree with me. It's so simple to conversationally market the power of the aloe and all the amazing products we work with. So I'm gonna put that to one side, and I'm gonna focus on something which I believe is fundamental to you all building a business. Now, how many people in this room want to get rich? How many of you want to get very rich? Okay, well, let me just share something with you. You cannot get rich, it's impossible in our industry to get rich, unless you know how to recruit people. That's a fact. You might get lucky and recruit one person and get pushed all the way to manager. But if you want to be making the big money and living the life of your dreams and having experiences that other people that you know will never experience, you have to learn how to recruit. Now, I always think that recruiting, I'm pressing my button, nothing's happening. Okay, I always think that recruiting is a little bit like fishing. Okay, so the first thing is, fantastic graphic there, there's lots of people with fishing rods in the water. And recruiting is a little bit like that in our industry. Never, ever, ever focus on just one method of recruiting. Never. We always need to have several fishing rods in the pond at any one time to give ourselves a really good chance to hook the big fish. I mean, how many people would love, would have loved to have recruited me and John? <laughs> but have you got enough fishing rods in the pond? How many of you would have loved to have recruited Adam May? or Andy Waring, or Diana Page, or Chris and Alan, or Philip and Roberts, or any of the leadership committee. How many of you would have loved to have recruited somebody who potentially could be better than you are? Because that's the key. You're looking for people to join your business who potentially could be better than you. So what I want to do very quickly, I've only got half an hour, is to run you through some ideas, some thoughts, some concepts on the different methods of recruiting, just to give you an idea of where maybe you should be focusing and which three or four or five methods you're going to focus on yourself, perfect and coach. Because that's the key, you've got to learn and coach it. And if you don't coach it, then what happens is your business will remain what we call single level. If you want your business to drop down to 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 levels deep, then you've got to master the process and teach others. Now, obviously, when we all start in Forever, one of the most fundamental things that we all do on day one is write a who do you know list. That's what that stands for, who do you know? And I'm quite tough in this area because I learned the hard way that if you don't do a good who do you know list, you'll run out of people to speak to within about seven days. How many people have fallen into that trap? They've written down people they think in their infinite wisdom are going to join forever. They've prejudged the people they know. They've written down a half-hearted scrappy list of 10, 15, 20 people, and they think from that list they're going to make their fortune. 
Well, I am going to disappoint you right now and tell you you're not going to make your fortune with a half-hearted, scrappy list of a few people. And you know what's really interesting? If we fall into the trap of prejudging our who do we know list, we will put on that list the people that we perceive as not being great quality because they will not be our chicken list because we're all too scared to speak to them on day one, but there'll be people who are very often broke on benefits, bad attitude, no energy, no passion, no focus, but you reckon you're gonna build a diamond manager business with them. Anybody, anybody fall into that trap? I did. I'm just speaking from experience. Uh, who do you know list when we first started had 38 names on. And yet today we're diamond. In fact, we just broke another frontline manager last month in Zimbabwe. You have to do a who do you know list. In fact, I will go as far as to say I won't work with someone that hasn't done a minimum of 100 names, a minimum. Because I don't know how to show someone how to build a business with just 10 names. Because I know that within two days, we've probably run out of people to speak to. So you need to master doing a list, expanding a list, and then coaching into your teams how to do that. And remember, your team will do what you do. So if you don't write a list, if you don't do a list, if you don't color code it, highlight it, focus on it, add to it every single day, then your team will do the same. And what will happen over a period of weeks and months, your team could have good growth to begin with, then it will plateau because people have run out of names and have got no one to speak to. So it's really important that you know how to expand the list. Now, once you've emptied your head of absolutely everybody, you need to have a, a, a thought process of adding two new people a day to your list. Where do we get those new people from? If we've already emptied everybody from our head, where do we get them from? Well, it could be that you use cards and flyers. And this is how prepared I am. I have my cards and flyers, but they're behind the curtain in my bag. I told you I wasn't prepared today. <laughs> but you know, never ever leave home without your business cards and your marketing flyers. Wherever I go, I've always got them with me. Because these are the, uh, this is what I use to introduce myself to other people, to leave them with something that will remind them of who I am. Not that they'll probably need much reminding once they've met me, but, <laughs> but you always need to be able to leave something. So make sure you've got your business cards, you've got your marketing flyers, you've got them with you at all times, so you never ever miss an opportunity to engage in conversation and to leave somebody with something, but only if they give you their number in return. You also can focus on using Facebook as a method to develop your list. Now, everybody nowadays has got a list of two, three, four hundred people on average on their, as their Facebook friends. And over a period of time, you need to learn how to utilize that list in the correct way. It's not about just blasting everybody willy-nilly. It's about using a structure and approach whereby people get curious as to what you're doing. So you have to remember the old adage that less is more. So if you're using Facebook to engage with people, less is more, promote the lifestyle, don't just try and sell, 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 sell on Facebook. What people like to see more than anything is the lifestyle, the success, and the stories. So Facebook is another way that you can begin to develop a list and to interact with people. This makes me feel really old now. I'm not really old, really. But when we first joined Forever Living, we didn't even have mobile phones, let alone Facebook. <laughs> we used to work the good old fashioned way, right, Adam? We used to make a phone call, and we used to arrange to meet somebody, and we used to sit down face to face, and we used to do a one-on-one. -on -one. And you know what, in those days, God, I sound like my dad. People didn't disappoint you, they didn't let you down. If someone said they were gonna turn up, they'd turn up. They didn't text you one minute before the event and say, we're not coming. But you see, the thing is, you've got to look at this as a banquet table. It's about, it's about familiarizing yourself with every single aspect so you can become good at prospecting across the board. You can also use online marketing. There are so many groups that you can join nowadays, organizations, whatever you've got an interest in. Go and find other groups online that share the same passion, the same interest. Begin to connect with people, build up a relationship, a rapport. And once you've got that relationship, you can then begin to spread the word about forever, what you do and who you're looking for. Because that's the key. What kind of people are you looking for? You can also focus on referrals. Now, 
It's really, really interesting referrals. Most people don't ever ask. They just don't ask. If someone says no to them, they take the no as a no. You know, if someone says no to me or someone's a customer and I need a referral, I'll actually ask them. If I'm talking to someone and they say no, I'll say, well, thanks for that, Roger. I understand the business isn't for you right now. However, I am looking for people just like you who are good communicators, good with people, ambitious, outgoing, got a business hat on. I'm looking for people who want to make an extra uh, 10 to 20,000 a month. If that's not for you right now, who do you know? <laughs> now, I tell you, I have just disturbed him. But if you don't ask, you don't get. If you've got happy customers, ask your customers if they're happy to refer you on to other people. And in doing so, maybe give them a free product as a thank you so they can begin to use more of the products. On top of referrals, we've got our customers. I mean, how many people in this room, well, I'll tell you something I always find very shocking. I find it really shocking that I meet people who are forever customers and the person who retails products to them has never, ever mentioned the business, ever. In fact, I know a lady in this room, I won't mention her name, who was a customer for quite some time with the aloe deodorant. And eventually the person that she bought products off just stopped connecting with her. And so she connected with another lady, and that other lady went to deliver her deodorant in a box, in a new distributor pack. And as she was emptying the box and the deodorant was right down at the very bottom, going through all the other products, she just happened to mention the business and the travel and the car and the profit share, chairman's bonus, and the lifestyle and the freedom. And by the time she got to the deodorant, which is what this lady wanted as a customer, this lady had registered and went on to build a business where she's achieved travel, car plan, chairman's bonus, and built a huge business for herself. Are you talking to your customers about the business? Because if you don't, somebody else will. And there's no point moaning if you've lost a customer to somebody else who had the courage and the foresight to speak to them about the business where you didn't. And your customers can make some of your best distributors because they're already in love with the product. So make sure that you have a relationship with your customer and give them the chance to say it's not for them. Keep looking after them well or give them the chance to say it is for them. You can do adverts. Now, I'm not talking about you know, Daily Telegraph or the Sunday papers. I'm talking about little parish council magazines. I'm talking about little adverts in the post office, maybe in shop windows. I'm talking about adverts in school magazines just to get you and your name out there so people know who you are and know what you do and know who you're looking for. You see, that's the key. You need to let people know who you're looking for. And so that has to be part of the wording you use with your marketing. Contact marketing, a brilliant way to build a business. Never, ever, 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 ever miss an opportunity to speak to somebody. Now, you have to, you have to practice this one a bit. Because the first few times you go out contact marketing, and contact marketing is quite simply where you go out to speak to people that you don't know. Now, the very thought of that for most people in this room will set their heart racing. Your hands have gone clammy, and I can see you already saying, I'm not doing that. I'm not speaking to people I don't know. But the thing is, we engage with people every single day that we don't know anyway. So why not just go out there, be happy, be cheerful, be bright, be vibrant, be different to everybody else and attract people into your sphere of influence and just start a conversation. Because what's the worst that people can say? Exactly. I had a, I had a new manager 18 months ago. I was in a car park in London. Went to pay for my car parking ticket. A beautiful, beautiful black face walking towards me with the most amazing hairdo with all balls and beads and bangles in her hair. And I just said to her, wow, you look amazing. And she said, thank you. And I said, do you know today's your lucky day? And she said, why? And I said, because you've just met me. And she said, why? We had a two minute conversation because I could see the traffic warden. That was on the Friday. By the Monday, she was at the business presentation and three months later, she was manager. 
Now the point I'm making is, who are you talking to every single day? Or do you walk by everybody with your head looking down? Because if you smile at someone, they'll smile back at you. Most people have got miserable faces. It's true, when you walk into town next time, have a look at everybody's faces, they're pretty glum. But if you walk along with a big smile, looking good, you will attract people into your sphere of influence. So let me tell you that contact marketing works, it's free, it's duplicatable, it doesn't cost you anything to do other than the fact you've got to overcome your fear of someone saying, get real, no. Because that's all they're gonna say, or they're gonna walk by you and ignore you. We have, a, we have a, a huge business in Nigeria, all down to the fact that we've got a guy in our business called Richard Hayes. Richard Hayes was an accountant. Um, and are you in the room, Richard? Is he here? Shout. Now, I have to say, Richard, I hope you don't mind me saying this. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> but when we talk to Richard about speaking to people off his contact list, he, he was an accountant. And he kind of thought he was a bit above this networking thing. Right, Richard? And um, to get him to talk to people was really difficult. Because, you know, well, well, I'm an accountant. Don't you know who I am? And I, we used to say to him, you'll be a broke accountant if you don't get off your backside and go to work. And with a lot of trial and error, we actually managed to teach Richard how to go contact marketing. But it took a long time. My mother, bless her, is no longer with us. We'd go into Leicester with him. Richard would be in his pinstripe suit. He'd have his accountancy hat on. And he'd walk up and down, speak to nobody. But by the end of his half hour lunch break, he was completely exhausted. <laughs> but one day, we got him focused on doing the job. He went into the bank, and standing in the bank, and uh, we had said to him, if you, come ha if you come back from your lunch break with no names today, that's it. Forget it, we're out of here. So there was a little bit of fear of loss. So he looks to the left and he looks to the right and I know his heart is beating, I know his hands are sweaty, I know he's got a dry mouth and I know he's fearing the whole process. And he just looks at this lady and he just said, oh, the line's very slow in here today, isn't it? She went, yes. And he said, where are you from? And she said, Nigeria. And he said, oh, we've got a business in Nigeria. <laughs> in fact, he was so excited, he probably overdid it a bit there, but hey. <laughs> she actually said, no, it wasn't for her. But he was smart enough to say, do you know anybody? She passed him on the name of a lady called Maria Adigo. He went to see Maria. He brought Maria down to see us. I'll never forget it. She sat in our kitchen and her husband slept through the whole presentation. <laughs> she looked completely disinterested as I showed her our bonus checks until he got to the one that was over 12,000 pounds. She nudged her husband, he woke up, and she said, I'm in, what do I do next? <laughs> now, just fast forward that, she's now a double diamond. With a double diamond in a business, a diamond in a business, most of Nigeria has come from Richard having the courage, finally, to give that card to somebody who said no, he asked for a referral, and now most of Nigeria is in the team. So well done, Richard. But you have a choice. You can either do it or choose not to do it. It's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to you. My advice is, if you want the good things in forever, if you want the good things in life, you'll learn how to talk to people. It's all about having conversations. And it doesn't matter if anybody says no. And you know what? You meet some amazing people, some wonderful, wonderful people. It could be that you join some business clubs. We have a, a fantastic lady in the team called Sylvia Chukwemeka, a doctor. In fact, she's not Chukwemeka anymore. She's just got married, so congratulations to you and a long and happy life. And I remember sitting with Humphrey, brainstorming ideas about prospecting and saying to Humphrey, Humphrey, I know you've exhausted your list. I know you've done this, I know you've done that, but what you need to do now is you need to go out and you need to join some business clubs. Go and meet people that you want to connect with. So he went along, he joined the business club, a breakfast club, if I'm right, and he met the beautiful Sylvia there. And Sylvia is now one of our key leaders in the group and is no longer a medical doctor. She's now full-time in forever as a result of meeting Humphrey at the business club. It could be that you do launches. You know, I believe that you're going to meet some of the best people you'll ever meet at product launches. 
In fact, I, um, I remember very specifically recruiting Chris Goldsborough to product launch. And I won't go into the story. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> I was late and I didn't even want to go to this product launch anyway. And have you ever had that kind of feeling where you go, oh no, I've got to drive two and a half hours. It's a cold, wet, miserable night. I know there's only going to be four people turn up. Do I really want to go? Now, again, you have a choice. You can either be one of the average distributors who rings up the host and says, you know what? There's only four people. I'm not coming. Or you can be like me, grumble about it, but get in the car and go anyway. And when I got there, I was a bit late, and I had a beautiful silver Mercedes, and I screeched up to the address, and I, I thought I was in the right place. I parked my car, jumped out of the car, got my box, and behind me, a BMW screeched in behind me. And I looked, and this quite... How well, can I describe it? <laughs> this... This... This very... <clears throat> she was very sure of herself. That was the best way to put it. Jumped out of the car, flicked her hair, looked at my car, and said, nice car, what does your husband do? <laughs> now, I didn't even want to be there anyway. And I was now totally ticked off. We get into the, into the, into the room, and uh, it was a nice, nice lounge, and there were four people there. Chris was the fifth. I do my presentation, and I just knew she was going to be trouble. <laughs> you know when you just know she's going to be trouble? Every single product that I picked up, she wanted to know more about, because she knew someone, I had a family member, that needed that particular product. So my 40-minute normal presentation was in great danger of becoming four hours. But at the end of the presentation, I thought, right, I'm going to get you back now. <laughs> so I said, you know, I have the privilege of building my own business. I work part-time and make a six-figure income. What do you do? <laughs> and it was the first time for the whole evening she was absolutely silenced. <laughs> but it gets better because I only had four information packs with me about the business. And at the end of the evening, I did my close. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for hosting the evening. It's been great. If you want to place your orders, this is what you do. Just before I close, I would like to say the company is expanding rapidly. We're enjoying growth, not just here in this area, but all over the UK, all over Europe, all over the world. And right now, we're looking for ambitious people, people who might want to make a, a, a two or three extra um, thousand pounds a month by becoming part of the team, or people that want to go on and be more involved in the leadership roles and make those six-figure incomes. I do have information packs, and if anybody wants one, please ask. <laughs> what was really interesting, all four of the guests wanted information pack and I gave them out and suddenly Chris wanted one and I haven't got one <laughs> anyway fast forward she eventually joined the business and her and her husband are now full-time we placed their two uh, very um, stressful main board directors incomes with forever and are living the life of their dreams all from a launch now the reason I'm sharing this with you is I think a lot of people don't realize that there are so many ways that you can focus on to build a business to find people because ultimately, that's what we're paid to do. And if you're not connecting with people, and you're not creating relationships, and you're not building your pipeline, I promise you, you are not going to build a big business. But for everybody, at some stage in their business building process, there is something that will hold them back and stop them embracing the whole process and actually rendering them so um, immobile that they don't do anything. And that's fear. Fear of rejection, fear of people's opinions, fear of laughter. All these fears take over. Now, I'm going to say something that is a bit controversial here, because I had it said to me, and it was a wake-up moment, because I was probably one of the world's worst at speaking to people. You know, I pick up the phone in the good old days, the phone. I pick up the phone, it'd ring once, I'd hang up and say, brilliant, they're out. <laughs> if it was engaged, it was a bonus. <laughs> You know, we can, it was because of my own internal fears. But here's the thing, the clock's ticking. And we can't get back time. And just when do you want to live the life of your dreams? Just when do you want to have all that's important to you? So fears, false evidence appearing real. 
More often than not, our fears are our own internal perceptions and not the reality of the people we're talking to. How many times have you spoken to someone thinking they're going to reject you, thinking they're going to laugh at you, thinking they're going to give you a horrible opinion, but they've actually said, oh, thank you for thinking of me. Most people, ladies and gentlemen, are living lives of quiet desperation behind their closed doors with no hope, nowhere to go, and a bleak future to look forward to. You are their hope. You are their route to a better life. So put aside your fears. Because if you don't, you're being selfish. That's the controversial bit. Because ultimately, you deny other people what you've all got. And every one of you are in this room because somebody thought enough of you, if they knew you, or had the courage to connect with you if they didn't know with you, to say, hey, I've got something. Come and take a look. It might be for you. It might not. But if you don't look, you'll never know. And I promise you, if you master recruiting, if you master this wonderful industry called network marketing, we have to market ourselves because people buy us first. We have to market our message, our company, our opportunity. If we can do that, network as an element of work, marketing, then I promise you everything that you want in life. But you've got to learn the process. Now, if I said to you there were only a handful of things that you needed to learn in order to be successful, would you learn them? Again, that's your choice. How quickly can you learn it? Well, everybody's different. It took me eight months to learn the process. It didn't stop me and John going manager in 14 weeks, but if you asked us how we got there, I'd say we were just ignorance on fire. And that's the honest truth. We knew that 35 was not as good as 48, so let's get to 48. We did so many launches, it was unbelievable. In the first month, we recruited nobody. In the second month, we recruited three people, and we never looked back. Because it was important to us. But it wasn't until about eight months down the line, and I remember it specifically, we were in Milton Keynes, we'd done a business presentation, we were driving home, and I had that light bulb moment where I thought, oh my goodness, I can see it. It makes sense. And this is what I saw, clearly. I realized that to build a business, you've got to learn how to contact people in any of the ways that I've just shared with you or a way that maybe be, I didn't talk about today. But you've got to learn to contact. You've got to learn the words. You've got to learn what to say. You've got to learn how to answer the questions. There's only ever about four or five questions they're ever going to ask you. You've got to learn how to share the opportunity without giving them too many facts and figures where you can make it real to them. Then after that, you've got to learn to invite. Invite them to look at the business. And that could be one-to-one, -one, a business presentation, online, via Skype. It doesn't matter, but if you're making contact and you're inviting, you've got to show. You've got to show the business in some way, shape, or form. And then you've got to learn how to recruit them. Now, if you're at a business presentation with somebody, at the end of the business presentation, you don't go, what do you think? That's just not the way you recruit. What you would say is, now a fact, I think you can see by working closely with me, under the umbrella forever, how over the next few months we can put a business in place that is going to give you that 3,000 a month and allow you to leave work, spend more time with the family, and be your own boss, can't you? If that's too much for you and you're just learning, why don't you say, which bit of the business did you like most? Now, anybody can say that. Which bit of the business did you like? Nine words. <laughs> and they'll tell you, but don't go, what do you think? Because if you say, what do you think? They'll tell you what they didn't like. You see, so you can learn at your pace, but learn it you must if you want to be rich. Then you've got to learn how to plan. Planning is very simple. Sit down with someone, ask them what they want, show them the marketing model, book some launches, get them to do a list, help them to learn the conversations, help them to recruit their first few people, get them through to supervisor, and eventually develop them as managers. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we do. And I actually can't make it any more complicated than that. Sorry. 
But the challenge in the process, the six step process is you. You'll be the challenge. You'll be the one that either says, okay, if that's what I've got to do, I'll learn it and I'll do it. Or you'll put your brick wall up and you'll make excuses. Now listen, you can make excuses or you can make money, but you can't make both. So which one are you going to be? Someone who says, I can learn that six step process. I will master it. I will master the uh, art of marketing. I'm going to go and find myself some people. I'm going to build a business and live the life of my dreams. And this is kind of, this next bit I'm going to share with you is kind of what really attracted me and John to the business when we first looked. Let's just say, by working smart, learning the system, underpinning it with urgency, please, you can't stroll to a goal. You've got to race, you've got to work flat out. Turn off the TV, put down the papers, get off your phone, stop texting anything that's drivel. Only focus on things that are income producing activities because remember the clock's ticking. But let's say we could find five key people. Now here's the thing, it's not five application forms, it's five key people. It's five people who are prepared to become managers. Now, you might have to sponsor 10, 15, 20 to find five. You could get lucky and your first five could be the ones. Who knows? But the beauty about what we do is the simplicity of the marketing model. Because if you can find five people and teach them the six-step process, you've now got duplication. Five become 25. And if you're teaching a good message, the next generation will teach down and the 25 becomes 125. And you begin to work in with your team, doing your sizzles, your meetings, coming to the events, supporting the business presentations, online, doing your Skype calls, and suddenly the 125 becomes 625. Add them all together and you've got 780 people in your team. Now, if we've got 780 people in our team, all turning over around about 500 pounds of productivity each per month, it means your business is turning over 390,000 pounds per month, and you're only doing 500. And the income on that is 19 and a half thousand pounds a month. Now, I know it's not a lot, but you can get by on it, can't you? <laughs> and when I first saw that, I thought, what a load of rubbish. I wasn't even making that in my full-time job after 18 years, and my friend was telling me I could make that in a month in Forever Living. Get real. That was what I thought. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room that had the same thought, right? 19 and a half thousand a month. But then I thought, well, what if I'm only half as good? If I'm only half as good as that, I could still make 10,000 a month. That's not a lot, but you can have a pretty decent life on that. I'd, I'd struggle to manage on that right now. But you know, you kind of grow into the money, right? <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> but then I thought, well, what if I'm not that good? What if I'm only quarter as good? That's still 5,000 pounds a month, which is almost triple the national average income for a full-time job. And the question I have to ask to all of you, would it be worth working hard, and I mean really hard, and from the minute you leave this room today, going out there, doing a list, talking to every single person that you know, getting in front of them, showing the business, showing the business, showing the business, showing the business, recruit someone, show the business, show the business, show the business, recruit someone, because not everybody you talk to is going to see what you see. It doesn't matter. You do not have the luxury of going, poor little old me, someone's just said no. If someone says no next, and if that person says no next, and you keep talking until someone says yes, and if they're the right ones, you've just filled one of your places for your first five key leaders. Is it worth working hard to build an income of 5,000 to 20,000 per month under the umbrella of forever with full support and training, with recognition to live the life of your dreams? Is it worth it? Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> because. These were the questions that we had to ask ourselves 20 years ago. When we started with a blank sheet with 38 names on a piece of paper and not even knowing how to make a phone call, 
We had no idea how to, make a, how to do a one-on-one. -on -one. John's first one-to-one -one was at least two and a half hours long. <laughs> it, we were really, really, really bad. In fact, we were probably worse than most people in this room. But I'm standing on the stage today as a diamond manager. How did that happen? Because first of all, we decided it was going to happen. Secondly, we committed to learning the process. Thirdly, I don't want to be a supervisor. I'm not decrying it, it's just a stepping stone to manager. I didn't want to be a manager, I'm not decrying that, but it's a stepping stone to sapphire. I don't want to be a sapphire, not decrying that. I want to be a stepping stone to diamond sapphire. I'm not decrying that, but the profit centers in forever. Our manager, sapphire, diamond, sapphire, diamond. They're the profit centers. Why would you not max out on them? So you have it within your hands right now to leave this room today and make a massive difference in what happens in the next three or four months. Because if everybody in this room can go out and network as if your life depends on it, because frankly, I think it does. Because if you go to your boss on Monday morning and say, hey boss, if I work really, really, really hard between now and the end of the year, will you give me a pay rise and pay me five grand a month next year? What is your boss gonna say? No, that's the reality. But now you are your own managing director. That may be a little bit fearful for you, but you'll grow into it. You have it in the palms of your hands to earn these kind of incomes and more. The question is, are you prepared to go to work? And what I would say right now, with the O2 coming up, the global rally in the UK, is the thing that the UK needs to do is to go into massive, massive recruitment mode. More than you've ever done before. Because if you can all become a manager, or develop managers by the end of this year, and then go into next year, structured for chairman's bonus, you are all going to say thank you. Because by the end of next year, you'll all be pulling incomes that you never felt or dreamt possible. I sat with one of our team members the other day, an amazing young woman. This time a year ago, she was making eight, nine, 900 pounds a month. She decided to decide to implement the process, to work like she'd never worked before in her life. And a bonus check now, one year later, is about 8,000 a month. So anybody in this room can do it, but it's a choice. Am I going to or am I not? It's simple, yes or no. I won't, don't give it a go, don't try, just do it. Just do it. What I will say right now, it's time to focus and get to work. Forever UK is riding a wave of growth like we've never seen before. Business is about timing. The timing is right. The company is right. The opportunity is right. The marketplace has never been so vibrant. Are you right? Because if you're right, your time has come, and I will wish you not good luck, but great success in your recruiting and building your business between now and the end of the year going into next year. Thank you very much.